Hey guys, okay, so here we are on a sword grip creation and basically you could use this technique to create anything, right? Whether it's rope, a sword grip, right? A weaved basket, right? Anything of that sort. Basically, as long as it has a sort of repeating pattern, right? Or anything of that sort. So what we're going to do here is right, get right into it and go to the tool palette and click on one of these primitives here and then click on it again and select the ring 3D. It can be any one of these, right? The cylinder here, right? You can click on the ring 3D again and you'll see the ring will pop up. Okay, so primitive, click on it again and select the ring. Then you can go down to initialize and let me just select my sword here quickly right so basically whatever you're using to create this so in my case it's the sword i'm going to select the sword i'm going to go back to my ring i'm going to go to insert and i'm going to select that sword so just for scaling so now i can see oh okay this ring is obviously way too big so i'm gonna have to sort that out over here under initialize so let me just click on the on the ring first and initialize here it is okay you have all these options that you can work with okay so i'm going to press shift f so i can see what i'm doing i'm change the divide the s divide right down to about eight maybe right this isn't too important right but this one the l divide i want to make sure that's on 24. that way it divides by six four times and three can also fit into it so next i'm going to go to the radius s radius right just to change that and the thickness right because i want to change that thickness here and then let's bring that down i just want to scale that down with w so bring up w scale that down i think this is pretty good so let's maybe bring that radius down a little bit more so i'm going to undo that and go to s radius of maybe 10. K10 should be good enough. K9 okay, I can bring up the gizmo and then scale this down. So W and then scale that down. Okay, just so it fits the sword. In my case, it's a sword. In your case, it could be something else. But for now, we're just going to try and make this samurai sword grip here. So I'm just going to duplicate that and rename that to rope sword. Okay, always keep a duplicate just in case, right? And I'm just going to scale this one down just so it kind of hugs the sword here. Okay, that's good enough. Next, I'm going to bring up the gizmo, hold on control, click and drag, and then just where I got the position, I'm going to let go of control and then continue dragging three more times. So it creates three more duplicates. Okay, I'm going to clear that with control, click and drag. And then I'm going to duplicate this whole thing, right, with control, shift D. And then I'm just going to move this down. Okay, just move that down. I'm going to go to the original one, right, rope sword. Okay, so there's rope sword one and then rope sword. Okay, and right now I'm on the left view, as you can see there with our little head. Okay, that shows what direction I'm facing and what I'm doing. I'm going to press Shift F and go to the back here and then press Control Shift, click and drag. And I'm going to just basically get half of this, right? You can press Control Shift S and X to grow or shrink a selection. I'm going to go to Delete Hidden. Delete Hidden is under Geometry, Modify Topology, and then Delete Hidden. That's where that is. So again, Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden because we only need to work with half of this. So what I'm going to do is count four and then mask that off, right? With control, click and drag. And then I'm just going to bring up W, the gizmo with W, and then drag that down, right? Just so it matches that duplicate that we put out there. Next, I'm going to count these four here. So one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to mask that out. Right, I'm just going to mask these points here, basically, so I can just move them down just to create a little bit of a tapered look there, just to kind of cascade these down a little bit. Okay, so Control alt click and drag. And yeah, I'm just isolating it right into solo mode, just so I can get a better view here. Right, and just move things. Doesn't have to be perfect, by the way, as long as there's a smooth transition. Okay, next we can go back to that rope sword and then duplicate that again. Okay, because now we need two of these. And next I'm going to go down to deformation and then mirror. Okay, I'm going to click mirror and that's the wrong mirror axis. So I'm going to click off of X and I'm going to click on Z. Okay, and I'm going to mirror that. So that's what we want. Okay, and as you can see, we're facing the left again. And now I've got two of these, right? And as you can see, we already have that pattern. So I'm going to hide that one that we don't need anymore. We only need two of these, right? The one facing the left and one facing the right. And now I'm going to go to BMT for our move topological. But before I do that, let me just go to the normal move brush, which is BM, right? BMV, I believe. And I'm just going to go to move and then just move this out, right? Just so it's overlapping in that direction. Okay, BMT again, just to get out the move topological, and I can just move these as one piece here. Okay, just moving these around, right, just kind of sorting that out. And what you can do as well is you can kind of interweave these if you want. Right now it doesn't really work because it's too low topology, right? There's just too little there, so too, too little subdivisions, and we'll do that later on if we want to. But for now, I'm just going to move things into place here, right, and I'm just going to go to merge down okay so i'm going to merge that down 
so that these two are and that's on a geometry merge and then merge down and then now this is all one sub tool okay make sure you're on the sub tool above by the way before you merge down just in case so under geometry modified topology we've got mirror and weld okay it works just like mirror but it mirrors and it welds at the same time so what I do is mirror this to the right side and then hit mirror and weld and that'll mirror it and weld it to the left side which is what we want okay so now we have one piece and we go back to the move topological and just move this into place here just so that there's no jarring gaps okay next I'm going to press D a few times Control D right just to subdivide that and then we can just kind of move this right just because we have more geometry to work with we can now kind of interweave these points if we want to that's not on our reference I'm just making that up here so something like that okay what I can do next is bring out the gizmo right with W and then I'm just going to delete lower which is on the geometry delete lower because we don't need those so I'm going to zoom out a little bit here right I'm going to hold on control click and drag and then let go of control and continue dragging okay so hold on control click and drag and then let go of control and continue dragging that will make a few duplicates of the same distance okay I'm just going to move this one up and then do the same thing here hold on control click and drag let go of control Okay, and just make one more duplicate again, and I can just manually move this up. Okay, I'm just going to control alt shift click and drag just to get rid of those pieces there, and there it is, right? That is it. Okay, next I'm going to go to the gear icon there and click on deformer. Then on this PC, I'm going to hold down control and alt click and drag, and I'm just going to scale this up. There's no need to do this, by the way, just for um, just my sword, it does kind of taper up there a little bit. Okay, and we're pretty much done and that is how you create this sort of rope piece here on the sword now of course like i said this works with baskets right different weave patterns different ropes and i'm also going to go there and accept that again and now we're done right and just for a little bit of extra information what we're going to do next here is just use some alpha so we're pretty much done we can just add some just add some extra oomph to this right so we're going to go to zebrush pixel logic alphas i'm going to go down to textures right and then just select any one of these textures here this one looks pretty good because it's tileable so I'm just going to select this one, and this is from the official site, right? And you can click on the download button right over here. So right there, click on download. That'll download it, and what you can do is just double click on that, and then unzip it here. Okay, there's one for Mac, and I'm going to use the Windows one, obviously. Okay, now we can go to this one here, our low poly version, right? I just created a duplicate backup. Okay, so I'm just going to press Control D a few times to subdivide this, right? Just so we have more topology to work with. Okay, and before we do that, let's go to Z plugin and let's go to UV master and then click on unwrap. Now it's going to tell me that I need to be on the lower subdivision. So I'm going to press shift D all the way so I get to the lower subdivision, which is that. So shift D a few times and then unwrap it. Okay, and then now it's been unwrapped. This way we can apply a texture to it. Okay, so I'm going to press con uh, D, D, D a few times so we can go up a few subdivisions and then press control D again until we have about a million polygons, right? So now we're going to go to surface noise alpha click on that alpha and then select that weave that we downloaded okay the alpha that we downloaded now you'll see that this here is kind of that it looks nothing like what we want so i'm going to go down to strength right so mix basic noise make sure that's on zero okay next we can click on uv and then we can bring down that alpha scale right so i'm bringing it down okay that looks good enough okay and obviously we need to bump up the strength because this strength is a little too low so i'm going to bump it up here so not the scale and um, the strength so bring up the strength and I don't really like that look so I'm gonna bring it down instead and that looks a lot better so it's working on minus strength as opposed to positive I'm gonna click on yes that is good enough it hasn't been applied yet you have to click on apply to mesh but before we do that I want to go to layers click on new layer okay that is what we want and then I'm gonna to go to apply to mesh okay this will now apply to the mesh and the reason why it looks so low like this is because we only have a million polygons, right? If you had about three or four million, it would look a lot sharper. And we have the layer here, so we can click on two, so it's now two times the intensity, and we can kind of adjust that, right, before we actually apply it to our layer. And notice there's some jank here, but that's okay. That's just because of the way we unwrapped it. But that is good enough for the demonstration purposes. Okay, what I'm going to do here is you'll notice we have layers, so we have to bake this. Right, so bake all the layers okay and now we also have to delete our subdivisions right so you can't control copy so delete lower under geometry and now just like we did with the previous ones okay but now we have a pattern on it right 
So these are too many polygons, right, to work with. So I'm going to go to Decimation Master, Z plugin, Decimation Master, and then Pre Process Current. This is going to take a while, so give it a few seconds. Then you can go back to Z plugin after it's been pre processed and then go to Decimate. And let's make it about 10%. 5% is probably too low. And save before you do this, and then Decimate Current. Now you'll notice, right, it looks pretty jagged here, but once you zoom out, you're not going to tell that difference. Right, so from a distance, you're not going to see that. And this is good enough for demonstration purposes, like I said. The whole idea is there just to get the polygon count down, because we have quite a few duplicates here. Again, same thing, right? Hold down control, click and drag, let go of control, and then duplicate it a few times. And right now we have a pattern on it. And that is how you do that as well. So just a little bit of a bonus there. Another thing you can do is you can also go to Helix 3D, okay? And then go down to your initialize settings here. And just like we did with the ring, this is a helix instead. So it's, you know, uh, sort of coiled around. And that way you can kind of mess with these settings as well. I'm not going to show you this. I'm not going to show you everything here. So you can change the thickness, for example, right? You can go change quite a few things here. And normally what I would do is I would change that and then I would mask off this area here or isolate it. It's not isolating now because it's not a polymesh 3D, right? But you can make it polymesh 3D after you go, after you're done here, you can just go up and make it polymesh 3D and just kind of isolate these areas and then just duplicate them down kind of like we did with the with the rings and this here will control the thickness it's quite a few settings here that you guys can mess with and just have a look at that but i'm not going to show you this because like i said that it's it's that's kind of it's it's self-explanatory right kind of use it just to make your own sort of weave here if you want you can kind of see it going on here Okay, but that is pretty much it for this one, right? That's what we've done. That's what we've created. And as you can see, pretty versatile. As long as you kind of know how things work and you're okay with your division, you should be good to go, okay? And that's just... And another thing I can also do here is just go to back to the move topological and maybe add some variation here, right? So it's not so perfect looking, right? Just a few pieces here and there. But that is pretty much it, right? Uh, you can kind of have a little bit more fun with this and just take it to another level. Okay, and if at any point you guys are a little bit confused on any of the concepts that I covered, I do have quite a few videos on morphing and masking and layers as well. So I did leave a few links in the description and I also left cards on the actual video at those parts. So you guys can definitely check those out. And yeah, like I said, that is pretty much it. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section and I will see you guys in the next one.